Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Cabiomorph rodents are some of South America's most instantly recognisable animal groups. Being a diverse bunch that includes the cute guinea pigs and chinchillas, the spiky American porcupines, the burrowing tuco tucos, and the chilled out giant capybaras. Like platyrrhine monkeys, the closest living relatives of these rodents are native to Africa with all members of this lineage tracing their ancestry back to a single dispersal event across the Atlantic Ocean, probably during the middle of the Cenozoic. When exactly the ancestors of cabiomorphs first arrived in South America has been the subject of debate, with the discovery of the fossil genus Cananimus in 2012, alongside several other species which were found at the CTA 27 site in the Contamana region of Peru, suggesting that cabiomorphs have been present on the continent since the Middle Eocene, roughly 41 million years ago. This tiny, herbivorous, mouse-sized animal, weighing just 40 grams, has been found to be among the most basal cabiomorphs, alongside the contemporary genus Cachiacoi. However, more recent studies by Kenneth Campbell Jr. et al. have questioned the age of these ancient rodents noting that the same genera and even species were present both at the CTA-27 and the early Oligocene Santa Rosa fossil locality in eastern Peru, which has been more robustly dated to circa 30 million years ago. Interestingly, some of the oldest known fossil monkeys in the Americas were also found at Santa Rosa, which indicates that these animals and the cabiomorphs both arrived in South America at roughly the same time. The Santa Rosa site represents the remains of an ancient tropical forest that was home to a diverse community of mammals, including a wide array of metatherians, such as the extinct carnivorous sporacidonts and the vaguely diprotodont-like polydilopomorphians, some of which were a bit rodent-like. Other metatherians present include the familiar crown group marsupials that are still around today, including the orders Microbiotheria, represented among living marsupials by the Monito del Monte, Porti tuberculata, the shrew opossums, and the Didelphimorphia, the so-called true opossums. The largest mammalian predator at the site was the cat-side sporacidont Patene camboli, which is an effective climber and hunted prey both in the trees and on the ground. Among its targets were the numerous cabiomorph rodents present at Santa Rosa, of which hundreds of specimens have been found. Interestingly, many of these already belong to familiar modern families, perhaps suggesting that cabiomorphs do have a longer history in South America than has recently been argued. Examples include the oldest known member of the American porcupine family, Erythrozontidae, which in modern times are fairly large, mostly arboreal herbivores although their fossil relatives were more terrestrially adapted than living species. The earliest genus, Eopululo, was among the largest rodents in the late Eocene, early Oligocene South American ecosystems. Other caviomorphs present included several species of agouti and spiny rats, a pretty diverse assemblage for one of the oldest South American fossil sites to preserve the remains of rodents. This diversity is suggestive of an explosive radiation, with the caviomorphs rapidly filling many gnawing herbivorous niches that were once the domain of some metatherians and the mysterious ancient gondwanotheres, which were probably pretty close relatives of the multituberculates and were somewhat cavi like themselves. A single potential gondwanother tooth has also been recovered from the Santa Rosa site, which may be one of the youngest known members of this group if the controversial Miocene genus Patagonia is discounted. If this is indeed the case, then it would appear that South America's Gondwanotheres may have been outcompeted by the newly arrived caviomorphs. Although, considering how fragmentary the remains of these animals are, this can certainly not be proven definitively at the moment. So, how did the common ancestors of caviomorphs arrive in South America around the time of the Eocene or Ligocene boundary? Both fossil and genetic evidence indicates that cavies are members of the big rodent clade Hystricomorpha a diverse lineage of mostly herbivorous forms that originated in Asia during the early Eocene. They are united by several anatomical traits, most prominent being a large infraorbital canal in front of the eyes. The first members of the group to split off were Catina dactylomorpha, which was comprised of several now extinct Asian families, as well as two living groups. The more widespread of these are the Gundis, four genera of small, stocky, desert-adapted rodents that are now endemic to northern and eastern Africa, 
where they often inhabit rocky desert ecosystems. They somewhat resemble the completely unrelated hyraxes in both their furry potato-shaped bodies and habits. Living in large colonies and diving for cover into crevices at the first sign of predators. Fossil Gundis had a much wider range than they do today, with the oldest forms hailing from the Middle Eocene of Asia, while during the Pleistocene they could be found in Southern Europe as well. According to a DNA sequence study, the ancestors of the Gundis diverged from their closest living relative, the Laotian rock rat, during the early to Middle Eocene. This animal, belonging to the family Diatomyidae, is the last member of a once more diverse family that ranged across Eurasia during the Oligocene and Miocene. It was once thought that Diatomyids became extinct during the late Miocene, roughly 11 million years ago, until the living Laotian rock rat was scientifically described in 2005, representing an example of a Lazarus taxon. Native to a small mountainous region that straddles the border between Laos and Vietnam, this animal resembles a large grey-furred rat with a thick bushy tail and is mostly herbivorous, although may take some insects occasionally. All other Histricomorphs are members of the far larger clade Histricornathiforms, which is made up of the South American cavies and the mostly African Phyomorphans, which are a diverse lineage and include a wide range of forms, including the Afro-Eurasian porcupines, the naked mole rats, the cane rats, and the digging blesmoles. Members of Phyomorpha also date back to the Eocene, and have a distribution that encompasses both Africa and Asia, which strongly indicates that their sister group, the South American cavies, evolved from African ancestors that rafted across the Atlantic Ocean on mats of vegetation, at a time when the distance between the continents was significantly less than it is today with the journey taking between one to two weeks during the second half of the Eocene. The ancestors of modern platyrrhine primates made a similar journey at about the same time, while lemurs, chameleons, and euplerid carnivores also had African origins, but took a trip across the ocean to Madagascar instead. It has also been suggested that island chains in the Atlantic, such as the Walvis Ridge and the Rio Grande Rise, may have played a part in their dispersal as well, with the potential African Eocene forest rachid Lavocatavis, possibly migrating from South America using this method, although its remains are very fragmentary. Rodents in general are particularly good at rafting and island hopping, with different groups making overseas crossings to the Caribbean, Australia and Madagascar as well, which almost certainly deserve their own future videos. With their generally small size, vast rates of reproduction and adaptable diets being in their favour. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering Insular India. It's split from Madagascar, and of course the unique animals that evolved there. See you again soon. Cheerio.